So Taylor series are a way of approximating a function around a central point x. Here you see the definition. f of x plus dx is equal to f of x plus uh, some polynomials in dx containing the first, second, third uh, derivative and uh, another term containing the factorials. Now, I would like to start with an example uh, approximating the cosine function between defined between minus 10 and 10. And uh, here you see an example of the function itself first. And then we basically have showed the approximation, so the, the Taylor uh, series for that uh, function, um, with increasing uh, order terms. And we see that the approximation gets better and better the more terms uh, we add. So that's a very powerful method that's actually used uh, almost everywhere in, in, in natural sciences. But does that help us to understand the accuracy of the finite difference approximation? Yes, it does. Let's uh, start with the original definition. And we have f of x plus dx on the left-hand side. So we subtract uh, f of x and we divide by uh, dx. And then we're left on the right-hand side with um, f prime, which is the first derivative, plus some uh, additional terms. Now, what happens if we neglect these additional terms? And you see the terms actually start with an order one. Um, so that basically means, and we describe that with O of uh, dx, that's uh, a, a descriptive of the order terms. And um, if we neglect those terms, we actually, again, we've seen this before, we have to replace the equal sign by an approximate sign. But now we have a quantitative uh, answer to the question how accurate we are. We're actually accurate to first order in dx. And that's very important later to quantify in general the solution of uh, uh, numerical approximations to partial differential equations, at least for the finite difference method. So we learned the way of approximating first derivatives. But sometimes, actually quite often, we also have higher derivatives, second, third derivatives in the equations describing our physical phenomena. So. Um, what about that situation? Let's start with a second derivative. So um, again, let's go to a simple case. We have a, a function, uh, which is shown here, and uh, we now know how to estimate the first derivative at points x, x plus dx, or x minus dx. So if we know, uh, if we already have calculated a, a, an approximation of the first derivative at those points, can we not simply take the derivative of those first derivatives uh, calculated at two different points and divide again by the grid increment or the grid distance between those two points, uh, dx or 2dx, to obtain a, uh, a second derivative. And that's what we're going to do next. So let's take our three points that we see here. And let's first uh, use the, um, the two right points to calculate a first derivative between f of x plus dx minus f of x divided by dx. And we calculate uh, another derivative to the, to the left, f of x minus f of x uh, minus dx divided by dx. Actually, those two derivatives are defined at the points x plus dx over 2 and x minus um, dx over 2. But let's not worry about this for the moment. But um, knowing this, uh, we can now write down the difference between these first derivatives and divide by dx, because that's the distance between these, uh, uh, these two points where we calculated the first derivative. So with a little bit of algebra, uh, we end up with a definition of or an approximation for the second derivative. So the second derivative at point x is equal to, and we have in the um, uh, above, we have um, f of x plus dx minus 2f of x plus f of x minus dx divided by dx squared. Again, there must be an approximate sign because uh, certainly this is not an exact uh, second derivative. But um, actually, in the next step, we're going to learn a way, a very different way, a very elegant formal way of deriving this 
operators, as we call them, uh, finite difference uh, stencils is another way of uh, describing them using, again, the Taylor series.